David Lincoln Productions. Sorry, I don't want to get copyright jammed up again. I already have enough problems with YouTube. But anyways, Alan Parsons Project Live from 1995 in Chile. Highly recommend checking it out. All right. Amazing action yesterday. I like I went to my uh other job and I was looking at the charts and I couldn't believe when I saw that 24 handle in the VIX, I was like, I almost fell off on my chair. Um, I tell you, what a rally yesterday and what a vol crushage. I mean, this is like unbelievably awesome. Um, anyways, you might you might be able to tell from my comments here that I was I, I came in a little short volatility yesterday. And, you know, I am not a perma short. I know people... Um, People kind of accuse me of that sometimes. I, I am short a lot of the time, however. And in this case, um, you know, we've got that big pop. And now Vol has really just gotten clobbered. A lot of people online in the forums and stuff are like looking to like go against this trend. It's so, it's so interesting how retail so often seems to want to go against whatever trend happens. It's like we get a rally. They're like definitely time to buy puts this this stuff is going to collapse and that market was really strong yesterday and it didn't seem like you could really attribute that to any particular like event i mean the news out of um the china talks seemed like it's going well but you know everybody's projecting that it's going well and the expectations have been lowered quite a bit coming into the meeting so it didn't seem like that justified the rally we had over it's really the past two days um if we look at the e-minis here you can see the rally and you know you don't need me to show you this but i'm going to anyway um let's take a look at the last five days and look at this i mean this action from thursday to friday is just a boom big rally okay and even the little give back towards the end of the day it's still, I mean, Vol just got clobbered here. Um, we are coming into expiration next week, of course. And, and um, so thus, the front month future is really hugging spot. Um, but it, it, it couldn't even keep up with the VIX this time around. And we actually do have a little bit of separation here. I'm showing here um, spot 1558 with the front month future 1589. So, you know... 25 cents separation something like that 30 cents um which is farther apart than we saw it um, a couple days ago and that's just due to the the fact that this spot is just cruising downwards now we saw vvix down 196 we saw vvix down a little bit more yesterday than i'm sorry on thursday than on friday but just a tremendous rally and a tremendous crushage in vol here uh not completely unexpected due to the fact that you know the VIX was uh, hitting up on that 20 level we've seen it kind of fall off of that 20 level a couple times and I hesitate to use the language of technical analysis because I just see so many people's um, posts on stock twits that have to do with the VIX and VIX ETP specifically UVXY TVIX and whatnot where they're they're using these technical analysis term technical analysis terms which in my opinion really don't apply um talking about support and resistance in a um a very esoteric several times removed from actual if you think about uvxy it's pretty far removed from actual supply and demand um in that it's a average of two futures now the futures the vix futures you know, they're right in front of supply and demand, but supply and demand for once again, something that is kind of removed from actual reality. It's not like you're buying widgets or, uh, you know, corn. You're buying something that is based on options on an index uh, of stocks. So you're, you're so far removed that it really 
it really falls apart as far as technical now stuff in my opinion yeah you can look at a chart and see and you can you can chart these things just like anything else but um, support what does that mean when you've got contango to you know when you look at this chart here behind me there's no calculation on this chart for contango forces there's no calculation on this chart for drift so um if you took all those things into account this chart would probably look much flatter so it just boggles my mind that people continue to use technical analysis on this particular product and uh, I try to explain to people over and over again why I, I really believe that that is wrong and I will continue to do so because not that many people see my video. So the more people that see it, maybe the more we'll kind of understand that technical analysis doesn't make sense for like a UVXY. All that being said, great sell off. I want to go through some of my trading because I did go into a kind of a little bit of a frenzy yesterday. Um, I let's start let's see let's start at the beginning here uh well let me just show you what my position is right now um so the first thing i did i started out with my nov uh, 22 nov 28 uh, sorry 26 30 cost vertical we've been short that for a while 20 times um, we did roll this out a week on thursday we paid five bucks to roll it out a week um and so the first thing i did was i wanted to somehow address my delta with UVXY down two and change. I wanted to address my delta. That meaning I, w I came in short about 300 deltas. I wanted to pare that down a little bit. Another way of saying is that is I wanted to cover a little bit of my position somehow. And one way I decided to do that is to roll five of my 20 spreads out to December. So I rolled down a strike and widened it out to $5 between the strikes. And I rolled into a December 2530 spread five times. And to do that, I collected a credit of I, uh, 29 cents. Um, you, let me just say, UVXY is very difficult to trade options on. And the reason for this is that the markets are wide. It's moved all around. And the people that are making the markets are experts on this. So you're not going to trip them up. Um, for example, this spread that I ended up doing, this D spread, uh, this no of D's roll, it, it was trading anywhere from 50 cents debit to, I mean, I'm just talking about the midpoint here, 50 cents debit to a uh, dollar sixty credit, I think it was at one point, all over the board. So you need to address in your mind what you kind of what, what the value of this is for you. And the way I did that yesterday to decipher it was I just looked at the individual spreads and I said, "All right, the Nov spread, the Nov uh, twenty six thirty spread, I've been following for a while, and um, essentially." The genesis of it is is that the 15 no spread I sold initially for I believe a buck 20. Um, once again, rolled it up to here. That now that was with UVXY. Um, I can't even remember. It might have been around 25. Um, then UVXY had the little spiky spike, and when I rolled into this, uh, rolled it out a week for five bucks. This was up around 165, the the uh, 22 no of 26, 30 spread. Okay, and then with the down move, this got down yesterday. This was uh, the midpoint was around a buck ten, something like that. And the D swan, the midpoint around yesterday in the middle of the day with with stock around maybe. Or I'm sorry, when I say stock, I know it's an ETF. With stock around 25 and change. This D uh, twenty five thirty spread was uh, the midpoint was around like one forty five something like that. So um, you're collecting a little bit of a credit. You're giving yourself a um, another month or two for this to move lower. And I did roll it down one strike, so it has to be below twenty five instead of below twenty six. If you you can simplify this stuff by just thinking in your mind, okay, what is the spread? If you have a twenty six thirty call spread that means uvxy needs to be 26 or below for you to capitalize on that spread on expiration now how how feasible is that in your mind 
Well, I mean, the VIX could be all over the board. We don't know where the VIX is going to be. Um, if we look at UVXY in recent memory, we can see, if I get out of the way, all right, well, 26 is here. UVXY has been above there for a while, but we have several forces kind of pulling it lower. Um, this is, I believe, a 180-day chart. It, it could easily be back above 30 in, in a month or so. Or, or so. But uh, this move down from 30 to 24 definitely uh, solidifies things. You know, we have some risk on here, but what we're doing is we're just staying consistently short UVXY until the time that it moves lower, makes that next leg down. Um, and we don't know if that next leg down has, has just come, uh, but with this move here, this last down move right here, I wanted to uh, cover a little bit because I, you know, I capitalized on this move down. Now let's cover a, at least a little bit. So if it pops back up, which it inevitably will pop up at some point, uh, we're not just going to give all back that we made on the way down. So um, now rolling out to that Ds, that didn't really change our delta, but it gave us more time. So then I, I said, all right, well, let's work. Let's look and see what we can do to actually change our delta and i picked out well, i've been following this uh november 22 november 2021 and a half put spread for a while and it was it was uh hanging out around 40 cents with uh uvxy of course noticeably higher in the 27 to 28 range it was hovering around 40 cents this spread now it's a dollar and a half spread right so you can think of it as a ratio so if this is 50 cents then it's one third of its va total value. So you're you're um, you're selling something for a third of its total value, and then so you have two thirds to lose, one third to gain. You can think of it that way. It might be better than than looking at volatilities or that kind of thing. Um, anyway, so this got this spread got up to about around sixty cents. Once again, these markets are wide; it's bouncing all over the place. It, the midpoint was around sixty cents, and I just dangled. I dangled a spread actually when the midpoint was 58 cents and, and I eventually got filled. It makes me kind of nervous in UVXY when you get filled, even at the midpoint when you get filled right away. It's like, am I looking at things right? Because these guys usually don't want to trade. Um, anyway, so I sold a one lot at 58. I dangled a one lot at 59. Dangled some more, a one lot at 60. Um, and then uh, UVXY kind of started to rally back a little bit. We got this little up move. Let's look at the chart. We got this little up move at the end of the day here. Or where did it, let me go back even further. All right, so we got this up move in the middle of the day here, right? And I was uh, right around here I started selling the spreads and it, it started to move higher in this range. I was like, I want to cover some of my Delta and I like the reason I picked the spread is because now if UVXY ends up in 41 days in between 26 and 21 and a half, then not only are you going to collect the full value of this call spread above, but you're going to, you're going to add on to that, the price that you sell this put spread below for, and you're just going to get the double whammy. So, um, so when it did kind of, look to rally a little bit back around this range, I, I decided I would dump some more spread. So I sold uh, 10 at 54, either 54 or 56. Let's look at the trades here. Anyways, I ended up selling a total of 30 of those spreads, which got my delta to short 165. So I went from short 300 to short 165. So I covered half my deltas in UVXY essentially throughout the day. Um, I did take the money that I raised from from uh, selling these put spreads and I bought some farther out stuff. I bought some Jan 2724 spreads. So just continuing the delta but putting it in different places out through time. So we're giving ourselves more and more time for this to slowly move lower and we're not allowing for like the events of like one week to to unravel our plan here because we've got short uh, we've got short coverage at different points in different different times to expiration and in different ranges 
of the chart here. So the most perfect thing that could happen would be UVXY hangs out to slowly sells off and gets to like 22 or something in the next 40 days and is just hanging out somewhere right above 21 and a half on expiration. That would, um, we would pick up an additional um, three or four thousand dollars if that happens. So that's what we're looking at with the position here. Um, I'm interested to know how, how it went for you guys on Friday, but it was just an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, move for me. I just wanted to also state that I did go along this uh, Indian small cap fund. I found it online as one of the worst performers of the year to date. I think it was down like 30% or something. Um, the Indian, it, now this is kind of like a macro play here. What I mean by that is I'm kind of taking a look at like, the uh, Indian economy, what's going on. Uh, they had a banking crisis, which has been somewhat resolved at this point. These are small cap stocks. They've gotten pummeled. I think there's so much potential in India just because um, there's a lot of talented people there. And it's uh, there's a lot of, obviously, a customer base there. And... Um, I'm just looking for a bounce off the lows here. Look, here's the chart for the last three years. And you can see it's, I'm in the way. But if I get out of the way, you can see it's come down from 72 and change all the way down to 31. So I paid 31.10 for 200 shares of this one. Um, and we'll see where we go from here. I don't expect to catch the exact bottom necessarily. But we'll see if we can bounce stuff around. You know, there's a lot of negativity out there. Everybody's like, we're coming into a recession. We're coming into a recession. And that could make us drift higher, in my opinion. Let's look quickly at our old buddy ACB just getting hammered again yesterday. Uh, once again, happy that I have no position here. But, you know, my spidey senses are still like, you know, I, every time I look at this, I like want to buy it. I'm like, let's buy it. Let's buy it. Let's buy it. Uh, if you feel the same as me, I would say a better um, way to make this play would be to buy the MJ, the can which is a cannabis ETF. This would give you um, exposure to this particular issue, which I believe might be the biggest component of this. But it also is going to give you some hedging because you've got other companies involved too. So if the industry does well, if either A, the industry does well, or ACB does well, you will do well but if acb uh stumbles somehow but the industry still does well then you'll be okay let's see if we can find out the components of mj etf here really quickly while i have you here and uh, i you know i'm sure that many many people have lost money on this this year because once again it sounds so cool to make money being long weed stocks that so many people like to do it okay so Top holdings, top holdings. All right, so here we go. So um, ACB, uh, here we go. So ACB, 7%, GW. Now, GW is one of the only MJ stocks that has really done well consistently for a while now. Let's take a look at that for a second. This company has kind of bucked the trend the whole time. It was already pretty high priced a few years ago, but it's continued to just uh, explode. Or uh, I'm sorry, it's continued to do well. GWPH is the symbol. And I keep trying to look for quality in the MJ ones. I was playing Afria and then and then Afria had all that the short sellers and stuff. So they got to have that one. Okay, so GWPH. Uh, despite what I said, it's, it's been down for a while now, but um, let's back it up and take a look. So I guess I'm talking out my ass once again. All right, so there's the story of this one. Uh, but once again, so it's the same place it was in 2017 and has definitely sold off. But th th this one is one of the like the more real companies in the, in the uh, industry. And um, this is all this stuff has gotten pummeled. So... Um, do you take, do you try to buy, a, accumulate a little here for looking for a little resurgence? Well, we've tried that before and it's gone again. So uh, 
people are a little gun shy with this stuff right now, which might mean it's the time to get in. But I will leave that determination up to you folks. Anyway, um, you know, I haven't gotten the viewership I wanted out of the um, out of the Twitch stuff yet. Uh, I can I plan on continuing to do it. I might change the timing a little bit because nine o'clock before the open is not the best time to have a show because people are getting ready for the open. A, B, it's it's kind of difficult for me at that particular moment to to come on. Um, but yeah, I, you know, the first couple shows I had a little bit better uh, attendance, but it's been tough. You know, the, the dissemination thing of, like, YouTube, when you say you're going live on YouTube, it, like, pops up on everyone's phones, and they, they're good at letting people know what you're doing. Um, people in our particular industry and um, retail traders are not as attuned to Twitch yet. It's more of a gamer thing. So um, I'm going to continue doing that, and um, I definitely enjoy having uh, seeing people there. But it's, like, a lot of the information I cover there... I don't want to leave it out of the YouTube stuff and I don't want to repeat myself too much. So um, it's kind of disheartening when you're online and you're talking to only like a couple people. It kind of like throws me off because I see that like viewer number in the window, how many viewers you have at the time. And um, it's hard. So anyway, so uh, we'll see what how the Twitch thing is going to continue. But uh, in the meantime, great action this week. Uh, UVXY, you know, the PL bounces around so much. I, I had really good marks on Thursday. So so um, my position making money Friday, you don't really see it as much because the marks were so good on Thursday that it just, it, you know, it showed me making, I don't know, $800 that I didn't really make on the Thursday marks. And then Friday, I just kept that because I actually did make money. So um, you kind of have to look at it over time. But hopefully watching me trade this and seeing the PL bounce around will prepare you for that similar situation. But UVXY is not easy to trade. They don't want to trade with you. It's hard to get into spreads. It's hard to get out of spreads. It's 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 a struggle. But you know, if you can massage stuff and spend some time to work your way into stuff, then it's definitely doable. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, good luck to everybody and I'll see you soon. It's gonna be my turn tonight.